Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have got to talk about Rocket Lab because something very interesting has happened. The market was falling or a lot of big stocks on the market was falling and Rocket Lab was having a very, very good day. 3.9% up. We breached definitely the $5 mark. We have been uh, fighting to stay over $5 and uh, you know, we, we did this doji here. This is what this sign is technically called, uh, you know, where the buyers and the sellers fight with each other and they cannot decide where the stock should go. And today we definitely broke over that point. And it's also significant because we are above the point when uh, Rocket Lab announced the share dilution, which was here. Um, and I wanted to talk to you guys what I think is going to happen to Rocket Lab because I think it's fabulous. Uh, so the inflation report came in uh, today and it was, you know, slightly better than expected. It wasn't like a blowout. And at first the market really rallied. Like I looked at uh, Palantir, it was green and many other stocks, Tesla, many other stocks were green. And then I checked a few hours later and I didn't understand what happened until I saw this chart uh, or post by uh, Unusual Whales, the market heat map. And guess what? All the Magnificent Seven uh, and some other bigger companies uh, like Netflix uh, are all majorly, majorly red. Maybe Netflix was part of the Magnificent Seven, whatever. I was not investing in those uh, companies. And, now, and you can see that the rest of the market was kind of green. And immediately the thought hit my mind, of course, because the theme of the high inflation period and the high interest rate period was that, you know, Google, uh, Microsoft, Apple, these companies have hordes of cash uh, that they get paid the 5% on. Uh, they have okay growth, they're buying back shares, and it's just a safe way to, to park your money. But the minute that rate cuts are coming, uh, that means that, and, and and these guys have become quite pricey, right? And the minute uh, the interest rates are coming, there needs to be a rotation because these guys are quite overvalued now. And then there are these forgotten shares, these small companies, uh, you know, the Russell 2000 companies that have been really interest rate sensitive and they really haven't recovered uh, like these big guys. Uh, and you can, you know, take your profits that you have had on the NVIDIAs and Googles and quite safely at this point invest into the small companies. And that's exactly what seems to be happening. So this day was the confirmation for investors like, OK, this era of, you know, the big companies being able to earn uh, easy interest money on, on the shares seems to be over. And the investors are focusing on smaller companies that are going to benefit from this coming era. And guess which of these two Rocket Lab belongs to? I'm going to spoil it for you. Rocket Lab is a Russell 2000 company, very interest rate, interest rate sensitive and not the company itself. It's the investors or like the stock price is very, very interest rate sensitive. So what do I think is going to happen to the stock? And by the way, before we continue, please make sure you're subscribed. Uh, and I really want to give a shout out to the channel members who are supporting this channel. There is 16 of you guys now. Thank you so much. I'm really honored. And we have two or three Patreons uh, also. Uh, so if you feel you get value out of this video and you want to support the channel, please check out the link in the description box below. So what can happen to Rocket Lab technically? And then I want to go over what catalyst the stock uh, has left until the end of the year. This is in case you're wondering if you should sell the stock, take profit, or if you're a new investor to Rocket Lab and you're thinking if you should be buying. So technically since uh, 2022 uh, July, so that's since two years, uh, Rocket Lab is in this channel uh, where there is different resistance lines. So the bottom resistant line is around the 350 line. There is a definite resistance line at around 580. And the top of the channel is $7.99, let's call it $8. So the top of the channel is $8. So I am very, very sure that we're going to go to the top of this channel now. And sometimes when I say this, yesterday I made a video that Palantir was going to go to 35 
And then Pantheer had a red day today and someone commented like, this video didn't age well. I'm like, dude, I don't mean in a straight line. So I think in the, in the near future, we're going to reach the six. Might take a few red days, might take a few weeks pullback, and then we're going to reach it. And I think if there is news catalysts, which I think there are coming, we're going to reach the top of this uh, channel. And I don't know what happens from there. It depends on a lot of things. But let's look at what catalysts Rocket Lab has left in 2024. Uh, so we are expecting the Archimedes hot fire test within weeks. I think Rocket Lab in the beginning, they were not so good at uh, informing us investors. And then there seemed to be like a general panic and people were saying like the rocket blew up on the pad and certain other things. So Rocket Lab, I think the problem that Rocket Lab has is they're very transparent with what they are doing. And if we were rocket scientists, we would understand that, okay, when the Archimedes goes to the test stand, it's going to take months. But because we're not rocket scientists, we think that, okay, it went to the test stand, they just set it on fire and then they film it and then the stock goes up and we are in heaven, right? If life only would be that easy. So they actually started communicating more and, you know, sharing different milestones uh, that they're reaching. So I think that that's very good that they're doing that. And if you're watching from Rocket Lab, then please make sure that you, that you keep it up. And please remember, we're not rocket scientists. So... Maybe you could explain things and timelines like uh, a bit more so non-rocket scientist people can think with it. Then, in a, just a few days, there is an HBO documentary uh, coming about Peter Beck and Astra. And I think that this is a very uh, undervalued catalyst for the stock. And let me tell you why. So Ashley Vance uh, wrote a book, When the Heaven Went on Sale. And by the way, he's probably coming to this channel uh, for an interview after the release uh, of this movie. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but so he wrote this book, When the Heaven Went on Sale. And if you are an investor in Rocket Lab, that book is a must read and I recommend it to everyone. And there are so, if you read that book, it's kind of hard to not be insanely bullish on Rocket Lab. And it's kind of hard to, convince yourself to even diversify away from Rocket Lab. You're just like, okay, mom, we're selling the farm. Uh, you know, wife, sell your cars. Everything is going into Rocket Lab. Uh, you know, make sure you mortgage out the kids. You leave them as security. Everything is going in, in Rocket Lab. But nowadays, reading a book is not so easy for people. I, I don't know why. Um, and a lot of people, even prominent Rocket Lab investors, have not read that book uh, and yes, I'm talking about you, Matt Farley, if you're <laughs> watching this video. So, but watching a film, a movie is very, very simple. So if this is a good movie that, you know, shows Peter back in a good light, and I, I think it will based on who is the author, I mean, who is Peter Beck, right? Like we all know who that guy is. And it's very easy to ask new investors who are doing due diligence, like, look, there is this documentary. You just sit down, you spend one hour and a half. And you should get a pretty good understanding of, you know, what Rocket Lab is and who Peter Beck is and, you know, what they are doing. So I think that that will be a much bigger catalyst than people think it is. And I'm very excited uh, about it. Then earnings on uh, August 8th. So, so now we found out today what is not coming on August 8th. And that is the Tesla Robotaxi day. And the stock reacted like 8% down which is insane. I mean, guys, RoboTaxi was not canceled. It's just the delay in the event. And who the heck was thinking that they are launching the RoboTaxi network in August anyways? So I guess you can call that an overreaction. Anyways, so, but Rocket Lab, uh, the Rocket Lab earnings is definitely happening. I think it's going to be a blowout earnings. I can't wait to hear their guidance for the second half of the year. Uh, there is rumors about a potential SDA contract announcement that is also slated for the 8th of August. Um, I don't know how, let's just say, let's not count on it. And if it happens, we should be very, very happily surprised. Um, but I'm not writing cover calls <laughs> on my shares. Let, let's put it this way. Uh, number four, potential new contract announcement. I should have written contracts announcements. Adam Spice has said that the target inside Rocket Lab is to double their uh, backlog that they have. 
they really haven't had really large contract announcements in the first half of this year. There is six months left of the year. And if my math uh, skills uh, don't betray me, the only way to reach 2 billion from 1 billion is you need to add 1 billion more of new contracts. And those contracts need to be announced. And that can get investors very, very excited. Me too. I'm included in those uh, investors. So number five, potential m and to further boost space systems and give us clues about Rocket Lab space infrastructure. So we know that uh, they are very good at satellite buses, which is like basically the frame and um, yeah, like the house of the satellite. And then the payload is, you know, like cameras and the science instruments that, you know, the satellites are supposed to do. Uh, that they're not good at. So Adam Spice said that they are looking at something in, in this space and it would give clues to what kind of space infrastructure they're planning to do. And I think that that announcement could be a very good uh, catalyst for the stock. Now, number six, this is also a very interesting one because the minute they do the hot fire test, they said that after the hot fire test is done, that's when the timeline for Neutron gets sort of like not written in stone, but you know, you can start counting uh, with the timeline. And that also means that they're able to sign contracts with customers. And if they just sign, a because remember Wall Street doesn't really know right now if there's even demand for Neutron. Like if you go to earnings calls, the, the questions that people, uh, the analysts ask is like, how do you know that there is demand? Please give us any signs that there is demand for Neutron. Uh, please tell us that there's customers. Why haven't you signed contracts? And the reason why they haven't signed contracts is because Rocket Lab doesn't want to give away their rockets and give discounts because of timeline uncertainty. And the management thinks that they have enough money and they're certain enough in themselves that they're just going to, you know, bring the, the rocket to market and then they will just sell it without any uh, discounts. I'm a big fan of this plan. And again, right after the hot fire test, we enter into this window where it's possible to sign Neutron contracts. So any such announcement, I mean, can you believe what a 10 or 15 launch agreement uh, with, let's say, Amazon or SDA or, you know, some other government agency would do to the stock? Because one, it would be a huge contract dollar wise. Uh, it would, you know, it would basically cancel this myth that there is no demand uh, for Neutron. And it would basically prove out the thesis that Rocket Lab knows what they're doing. So that would be very, very big for the stock. And I think that there's high likelihood that it's going to happen in 2024. And this is all the points that I said. This is just Rocket Lab, the company, right? And then outside of this, there is also catalysts for the stock, like the Fed rate cuts, uh, the inflation cooling down. And again, that's not because of the company, it's more like the algos and investors, they don't feel safe uh, investing into, you know, non-GAAP positive companies uh, when the interest rates are high and you can get 5%, you know, uh, risk-free basically on, on your money. And now that we are on the path to um, rate cuts, these companies become very, very sexy. And, you know, the, the lower the rates, the sexier these companies become. Uh, and I think that that's going to also be a huge catalyst uh, for Rocket Lab. So please let me know in the comments, what do you think Rocket Lab uh, price is going to be at the end of the year? All I can tell you is I want to write cover calls on a portion of my uh, Rocket Lab shares, but I want to wait for earnings. And I think that I want to wait until we reach into the sixes. And then I will probably write some half year uh, covered calls in with, uh, you know, eight uh, or 750 strike price. Uh, but I, this is just something that I'm thinking about. And I, you know, want to get all the data, want to hear the earnings because when this stock runs, I mean, look at this run, like it can run from three to eight, which is more than a hundred percent in like three months, you know, and I don't want to not be able to participate in this because I wrote covered calls and I didn't know what to do with myself or I want to make sure I write the covered calls here. Okay. So that's what I'm after. Anyways, let me know in the comments what you thought. Please make sure that you're subscribed. Again, if you got value out of this video and you want to support the channel, check out the links in the description box below and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.